He had been observing the prey for a short while, scanning for weaknesses and waiting for a perfect moment to strike. Hmm, healthy prey. The Velociraptor was a small but intelligent dinosaur, a new starting much smaller game. His target, however, was a Protoceratops, a powerful and stubborn herbivore that was feeding on the few plants that grow in this desert environment. The Velociraptor was smaller than the herbivore, but he has deadly claws and teeth. More importantly, he has the element of surprise. For now. Normally, he wouldn't attack such large prey. However, he is hungry, and food isn't plentiful in amongst the baking rocks and sand dunes. Risky. Need to do this right. He was on a rocky ledge above the Protoceratops, and had been waiting for the herbivore to fully turn its back on him. Eventually, his patience paid off, and he was in its blind spot. He ducked out of cover and ran for the ledge. He then used his powerful legs to leap forward, spreading his arms and legs out as he fell towards the oblivious prey. He landed right on the target's back, and sunk the claws on his hands and feet into its flesh. The Protoceratops was briefly frozen in shock, not realizing he was under attack, until it swiveled its head around and saw the feathered predator on top of him. In a panic, the herbivore bucked back and forth, kicking and yelling in shock and pain. The Velociraptor held on tight. Ironically, the Protoceratops' crazed thrashing was just making the predator's talons sink deeper into its victim's flesh. This was until the Protoceratops accidentally slammed into a wall, which also threw the Velociraptor into the rock face, stunning the small carnivore and forcing him to the ground. Free from his attacker, the Protoceratops began to run, but didn't get far as the Velociraptor was quickly to his feet, and in a test of pure speed, easily caught up with his quarry. He leapt onto its back again, biting into its hide, but was quickly thrown off again. He landed on his feet and dug his teeth into the prey's rear leg. Now bleeding from multiple wounds, the Protoceratops bit down on the predator's exposed tail and whipped its head around, throwing the lightweight carnivore across the sands. The small hunter rolled multiple times and then jumped to his feet to face his soon-to-be meal, but saw it charging him. He leapt back and tried to dodge to the side, but the Protoceratops kept swinging its head to block his path. He leapt to the other side, but the herbivore used its armoured skull as a shield to protect its flanks. Thinking quickly, the Velociraptor lunged with his clawed hand and struck across the small Ceratopsin's right eye, cutting into and completely destroying the organ. But in that moment, the Protoceratops clamped its jaws onto the arm that had just blinded its right eye and then pulled the screeching predator to the ground. Feeling his arm begin to break under the herbivore's bite force, the Velociraptor kicked at the prey's exposed neck, trying to sink his large foot claw into a vital area. The claw was not built for slashing or eviscerating, but it was effective at puncturing. He kicked again and again, but he could barely punch through the animal's thick hide. And when he did, he didn't hit anything vital. Die! Just die! 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 The carnivore screeched in pain, exhaustion and boiling anger. As the two tried to finish each other off, something unexpected happened. The dunes above them began to collapse, sending tons of sand sliding in their direction. The smart predator saw what was heading their way, and gave the mightiest kick he had ever given. This time the claw cut through, puncturing an artery. Blood flowed out of the victim's neck, turning the sands a deep red. Despite his injuries, the protoceratops didn't let go. If anything, it fought back harder. Let go! Let go or we both die! The Velociraptor screamed a blood-curdling screech, not knowing whether to fight or try and break free. And now the sands blew over them, quickly burying the two dinosaurs, suffocating them and entombing them in their final act. Then there was silence. There was no evidence of the fight. It was all buried under the coarse sand. The two bodies would fossilize and go almost untouched for millions of years, until it was dug up, revealing one of the most incredible fossils 
ever found. Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we will be breaking down the famously named Velociraptor. Velociraptor was originally discovered in Mongolia in 1923 and its name is derived from the Latin words swift and robber. There are two recognized subspecies of Velociraptor, being Mongoliensis and Osmolskia. A third, called Vadroscrum, is currently under review for validation as its own subspecies. It lived between 75 and 71 million years ago in the late Cretaceous period in what is now Mongolia and China. It was a member of the Dromaeosaur family and measured between 1.5 and 2.1 meters long and stood 0.5 meters tall at the hip, weighing between 15 and 18 kilograms. Now let's take a side note quickly. For some of you may be confused hearing how small real velociraptors were when compared to their depictions in modern media, especially the Jurassic Park franchise. This is because the species in the film was based off of Dionychus, a close relative of Velociraptor from North America. It was given the name Velociraptor simply because it sounded more dramatic. So just to put the confusion to rest, real Velociraptors were small from Asia, Movie Velociraptors were actually Dionychus from America. Okay, side note over. Velociraptor shares many traits of other dromaeosaurs, being bipedal, feathered carnivores with long fingers and a large sickle claw on each hind foot. One major difference is its skull is more elongated and low, with an upturned snout. With over a dozen skeletons found, it is the most well-known dromaeosaur. It was likely warm-blooded, and was a fast and agile predator, and scavenger, with excellent vision and hearing. So what did it hunt? Well, I will turn your attention to this amazing fossil discovered in 1971, simply named the Fighting Dinosaurs. This pair of skeletons, one being a Velociraptor and the other a Protoceratops, shows the two animals locked in combat at the moment of their deaths. They were likely buried in sand from a collapsing dune or sandstorm, preserving them astonishingly well. Here the Protoceratops is biting down on the Velociraptor's arm, as the smaller predator is kicking into the herbivore's neck, using its large claw on the second toe to try and puncture vital organs. This is clear evidence of a predator-prey interaction, and the Velociraptor could go after prey much larger than itself. The famous sickle claw was not a serrated edge, as it is sometimes depicted in films. In fact, the inside edge of the claw was quite rounded. Evidence from the fighting dinosaurs' fossils show that the toe was used as a puncture weapon to strike vital organs like the esophagus and major arteries, and not for slashing or eviscerating. When it came to small prey, however, they have a different use. Like modern birds of prey, a velociraptor may have leapt onto targets and pinned them under its weight, using its talons to pierce and secure the target, while using its outstretched arms and tail to balance. It could then use its relatively weak jaws to deliver the finishing bite, or begin to eat the animal while it was still alive. Their teeth were widely spaced and very sharp. Though their bite was not incredibly strong, they used the puncture and flee technique on large prey, biting into an animal and then fleeing, using multiple attacks to bleed the prey out rather than overpower it. They had three clawed fingers on each hand, used to grapple and secure fleeing prey. These hands could not pronate and always faced inwards. Though we often visualize them as pack hunters, there isn't a lot of evidence to support Velociraptor or most other members of its family hunting in groups. There is a fossil trackway in China showing three dromaeosaurs walking together, but we have no evidence of Velociraptor forming any form of complex group behavior. It may have filled a similar niche to bobcats, servals, and coyotes. Two specimens have been found with bite marks that match that of other Velociraptors, evidence of intraspecific combat. This could have been for food, territory, or mating rights, or possibly attempts at cannibalism. 
Velociraptor did have feathers, though to what extent they covered the body is not clear. Though likely they covered most of its body, except for the feet, jaws, and maybe the hands. These feathers would have had multiple uses, from insulation, display, covering nests, and distinguishing between different genders and individuals. Realistically, Velociraptor probably looked a lot like a modern bird of prey from a distance, and likely acted like them to some regards, such as resting in trees. The name Velociraptor is one of the most famous prehistoric animals ever. The actual creature is a little less known, however. This is why this channel exists, to help shed light on how these creatures were, and hopefully everyone learns something new. But how can you not love Velociraptor, a small, agile, feathered raptor that prowled its arid home in the night, and who is also part of one of the greatest fossil finds in the world, depicting the vicious life and death struggle of the late Cretaceous. But what do you think of Velociraptor? What lesser known dinosaur would you like me to cover in a future episode? And to regular viewers in relation to my narrative, do you think I should give more of the characters voices? Or should I stick more to the documentary style that I have always been doing? I do read the comments, and your input is appreciated. Until next time, thank you for watching.